Hi everybody, welcome to Groundwater. This is the first episode ever in the history of Groundwater. Uh, I am in Orlando, outside of the public library, with a $3 breakfast burrito and a cup of coffee from the nice deli across the street from the library. Uh, there's this little park and they have these giant copper alligators that are kind of neat. Uh, it's beautiful and it's sunny and it's warm. Um, and welcome to Groundwater. I'm moved by this concept that if you dig deep enough anywhere on the planet, you find water. And the Earth's surface is 70% water and our bodies are made of 70% water. And I take that as a metaphor for creative writing in the way that if you dig deep enough into the personal, it becomes universal. Um, no matter where you are on the planet, if you dig deep enough, you will find water, and then you will find what we're all made of. Um, and so that's why I call the podcast Groundwater. More on that later, but uh, this episode, I interview Marcus Amaker uh, in Charleston, South Carolina, and he's a web designer and a poet and a musician and a videographer and a good friend of mine uh and we have a wonderful conversation and i thought you would like it what's up <laughs> i'm here with marcus amaker yes uh marcus i did a bunch of research on you this morning and uh -oh. i noticed someone said a maker yeah it's actually amaker Amaker. Amaker, yeah. And I said Amaker. Yes, you did. But and it's, it's fine. Amaker. It's fine. Amaker. Yeah. <laughs> Marcus Amaker. Yes, Amaker. And I've known you since I was, I think, 18. No, that's not correct. You moved to Charleston when? 2003. Okay. Yeah. And I was in college here then, so I'm 34 now. I was probably... 20-ish then. Yeah, I was... Because I late, graduated CFC in 05. Yeah, I was late 20s, mid to late 20s. I didn't have any hair. Lived in West Ashley. Didn't have a bike. <laughs> the the good old days. Different, yeah, world, man. I would, yeah. I would hang out at the mall a lot still. It's kind of an interesting... <laughs> like at Hot Topic? Maybe, from time to time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Get, some, get a slice and hey, then go to the arcade. It's kind of interesting just that consumerism world is easier... It was easier then. West Ashley has changed a lot, yeah, I should say. But, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Um, I just want to get right into it. Uh, that was... What keeps... Okay, so I don't want to get right into it. You just led me to a question. <laughs> okay. Uh, what keeps you in Charleston? Like, what, what about the city moves you to, like, buy a house and build a life here? Because I left. Yeah. And I... <clears throat> Honestly, don't miss it. But why, what, <laughs> what about it for you is, like, the jam? Well, it was uh, an unspoken truth that came to me that it felt like home the second... Not the second that I moved here, but once yeah. I became comfortable yeah. here. Because, you know, my, my background, I've moved around my whole life. Um, yeah. Lived in Texas and Japan and Maryland and England and... Yeah. All that stuff. Um, so I think that was a part of me that was wanting a sense of home. Yeah. So when I really became comfortable here, I just really, it felt good to me. And it felt like uh, this is a place that I wanted to plant roots in. Yeah. Also because very much the walkability and the bikeability of uh, it. Oh, yeah, yeah, when, yeah. When I moved downtown. Because I don't really need to have a car, like, at, at all. And I, at really, all. I yeah. really like that. And, yeah. you know, if I need to get eggs i can just walk to go to the walk to the grocery store and there's eggs yeah eggs. right there yeah bam so so yeah i mean that's really part of it for me um that's dope that's dope uh new orleans is also very walkable yeah um yeah. one of the reasons why i like it uh so i i wanted to ask you i ran around uh for i don't know kind of on and off for the past 10 years um, getting, getting two master's degrees in English, mm -hmm. uh, partly because as now that it's over and I looked, I looked deep down, I realized a lot of that was, uh, for validation. Okay. 
Right and now. so I've, yeah. I've finally, I've come to you uh, for what I feel is the last piece of the puzzle. <laughs> and it's, uh, I, I just wanted to ask, like, can, can I make art? <laughs> like, <laughs> you can like, do whatever you want. Yeah. I know, I feel yeah. that. Uh, yeah. Sort of. Yeah. What what fascinates me about your work, uh, especially your music, uh, is you just give yourself permission. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's a silly question, but um, I'm moved by that. Like how you, Thank you man. almost in a Buddhist way, have this glor glorious sense of, I don't know, if you're not detached from it, you must be, you must be very thinking about it all the time i don't know because you like put it out yeah yeah just dude. with the balls of a superhero You're man just like, well it, it took <laughs> it took a long time to get to this point though because yeah. um you know music has been something that i've been creating since i was 10 years old and i have those tapes you know yeah 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 um but when i moved here i decided to take it back up yeah but I definitely had a lot of fear with my music, so this sort of putting it out there, yeah, just within the last year or so, that's how I felt. Okay. Because I've always made music like this, but I would just put it out and just keep it to myself. Sure. But I think, honestly, <laughs> um, the death of Prince kind of inspired me to really think about yeah. this life being this thing, because he was always a superhero to me, and he always put stuff out. Sure. So it inspired me after he passed to be like, well, why am I holding on to this stuff? Like, it's just, yeah. it's fun to let people hear it. So, and, 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 you know, poetry is something that I'm very com comfortable with. Yeah. I felt like I needed to be uncomfortable in the public's eyes. At okay. Least, you know, cause I know, you know, I could write a poem and release it and people will like it. But yeah. I know if I, if I do an album, release it, some people will be like, oh, that's interesting, you know? Right. So I kind of need to get my ass kicked a little, a little bit. I feel that. I kind of, yeah. yeah, I definitely resonate with that on a music level. Um, yeah, yeah. It's a new challenge. And in your poetry, I, I watched that Ted X Charleston yeah, 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 thing yeah. with Quentin Baxter, and it was mm -hmm. awesome. And in that poem, you have this line... Uh, and you say, I've been known to keep friendships when they do nothing yeah. but harm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I wanted to ask, like, how, it's, this is going to sound silly, but how, how do you make friends? Like, is there, <laughs> is there a recipe that one could use? And oh, then man. how do you, how do you unmake them if you need to? Yeah, well, I this is gonna sound like the hippie in me, but <laughs> I do feel like this stuff happens naturally over time. That okay. li that line was inspired by a close friendship that I had that that dis dissolved. Okay. For really, sort of no no reason, but then okay. when I sort of thought about it, maybe it needed to like yeah you know d dissolve. So you think yeah. about just. You know, so sometimes you are hanging out with people and you are with people and then just your time is up. Like, there's nothing more to really learn from that other person. Sure, sure. Do you, do you inform them? <laughs> do you give them, like, a pink slip well, so at two I've, weeks' notice? No, no, so <laughs> I've, I've, I've never done that. Okay. But I've, this former friend has done that with a lot of people. The former friend broke up with friends? Yeah, yeah, with friends. To say, I, was, I was one of them. But you got was, broken up with. Yeah. On a friendship level. Yeah, on a friendship level. Okay. But... Did, it, how'd you take it? It was hard at first, but it makes sense now. Because, yeah, it, I just... Yeah. it You just... Like I said, That's I feel like any relationship, yeah. it reaches a point. Some people like closure, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Even yeah. on friendships. Yeah. And I think it was just... Uh, yeah, for a lot of people, you know how it is. Like, you might yeah. hear from somebody, or somebody comes back into town during cr Christmas or something. Sure. Then you hang out with them. You're like, yeah. oh, we're just talking about the same thing we've been talking about right. for, for like, years. So, you know, is this going to move forward or just be where it's at? And sometimes yeah. if it's just where it's at. There's no need for it. So, yeah, I mean, it's a hard lesson to learn. But yeah. um, but just making friends happens okay. na na naturally as well. So that's I natural. Like, yeah, I feel like one of my things I like 
I want to do better is put more effort into when I meet new people. Yeah. People want to hang out and stuff, and yeah. I'm very comfortable <laughs> where I'm at. But you know, make it an effort just to hang out with somebody and get their story and all yeah. that stuff. Yeah, that's it's, dope. It's I just I some reason that line hit me when I yeah. watched it. I was like, what? Yeah, that's yeah, pretty yeah. dope. Yeah. Um, do you have any advice for someone who wants to quit their day job? <laughs> How does wow. one become like an artistic hustler? Yeah. Uh, well, that's a good question. I think I can just say for me, I realized that I was the stuff that I really wanted to do. Yeah. Um, I wasn't spending as much time doing, and I was spending a lot of time of my day working for somebody else. Yeah. And, of course, the paycheck was good and all that. Sure. But you realize how many hours a day and hours a week and a lifetime that you spend working for somebody else. And sure. if you aren't happy, that's just... For me, it's it ends up being sort of wasted time. Of course, if, if, the, if the money's good and you're in a lot of debt, you know, you have to work toward that goal. But yeah. when I realized that I could really work for myself and be happier i was like man this is a no-brainer you know so i had to do it so it was yeah like a lot of things it's not easy it sounds e e easy now <laughs> but yeah. it was really tough at first like financially that was tough but everything turned back around so like when the scales tipped when you realized you were working like super hard for someone else mm -hmm. but your stuff whether it be videography or poetry or music or design <clears throat> yeah was like not getting the same attention yeah that the paycheck was getting yes yeah yeah that's definitely true and i think i was in a unique position at the paper i was yeah. doing that work you know great you know and great graphic design and web design and videos for the paper yeah um and then so i i did realize too that i was at a point where i could let it go okay too so um letting it go meaning giving it to somebody else like i've you know sort of built this thing and now it's in somebody else's hands. And oh, I think, that's dope. Yeah, so I think the process of letting go, when I was when I realized that I was able to let it go, that was yeah. when I stepped off. And it sounds like that's a good way to let it go. Instead of just, yeah. like, leaving, like, yeah, without ever providing the job closure, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, I just, it just felt, it felt good. And I think, yeah, I think yeah. that that's the key, just talking about it just now. It's like, oh, I could let this go. I don't, my ego isn't really tied to it anymore, you know? So That's real. Yeah. That's yeah, real. Yeah. Um, on that, I'm reading this book that's, it sounds cheesy, but it's moving me, and it's called Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert. Okay. Uh, she wrote Eat, Pray, Love. Oh, word, yeah. And it's yeah. kind of about, like, fear and creativity and marrying those two and kind of living comfortably within it. But in her book, she's a big proponent of like not relying on your art for your money. And oh, word, yeah. And so I just wanted to like read a short quote to you and see yeah. how it lands. This is from her book. Uh, and she says, to yell at your creativity saying, you must earn money for me is sort of like yelling at a cat. Uh, it has no idea what you're talking about, and all you're doing is scaring it away because you're making really loud noises, and your face looks weird when you do that. <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> that is awesome. Uh, <laughs> Definitely relate to that with the cat. So, yeah. when you, when you, was there tension when you quit? You said it was kind of tough with money. Yeah. Is, oh, yeah. is there tension when you quit to be like... Because you dabble in like lots of different forms of creativity, and I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, you know, I don't want to get too far into your business, but I'm speculating like some pay better than others. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, did you have to like, oh, I can't write a poem today because I need to go photograph a thing. Yeah, yeah, and then and that's a still that's a, a process, um, but yeah, when I'm working, it's coming from a space where I'm feeling more balanced, where. You know, it's yeah. basically this whole life, everything actually, even when sure. you're working with somebody, it's all kind of up to you. So, right. but especially now, um, if I say yes to a client, yeah, then I know that that's a relationship that I'm getting into. Okay. And so, you know, but I'm better able to balance, you know, the writing with the, you know, doing the other stuff as well, because yeah. I'm coming at it from a place where I am working for myself. So... 
like I can I can say yes to an experience knowing that I can still write in the middle of it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I, okay. Yeah. What wasn't necessarily that way when I worked for somebody else. Yeah. True. Yeah. Cause like as yeah. long as you're the one defining yeah. the schedule, yeah. you might work 80 hours a week, but you're doing that so you don't have to work for someone else Yeah. or something. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I read another article mm -hmm. on you that said uh, you like to take two naps a day. Oh, yes. Yeah. Can you? <laughs> That's damn true. Yeah. <laughs> do you have... <laughs> That's dope. Yeah. Uh, do you have... How do we take two naps a day not me and you together <laughs> not, yeah not exactly me and you together but like yeah. <laughs> anyone who might hopefully hear this like how did they take two naps a day you just do it you just <laughs> i mean you just own it i you just on, fucking get in your honestly, pjs yeah honestly okay. how many things do we make time for mm. you, you can just make time for a nap like it's it's pretty yeah. simple I mean, I, I, I literally, it's scheduled, it's not literally typed in my phone, but yeah. it is a mental schedule for me, so sure. from like 1 o'clock to 2 o'clock or something, if somebody wants to meet, I'm like, no, I'm, I'm, I'm busy during that time. And you are busy. Yeah, because You're I'm... You're busy napping. I'm napping, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <You're> like, <laughs> yeah, and as <it's, laughs> yeah, easy as you say yes to meet, meeting a client or sure. meeting somebody for lunch, you can say yes to a nap. Like, it's pretty simple. That's, well, that's dope that's how much, like reverence you have for your own time yeah yeah um, i'm very selfish. have you always yeah. had that or was there like a a way i think i have okay. i think so i think just from a kid even just listening to the tapes that i did as a kid yeah it's like i spent a lot of time making you know m music of course the door was closed and yeah i could have been talking to my parents but yeah um yeah that's that's always been a part of me so um Dope. yeah just yeah just very fo focused on my art yeah um in one of your in one of your pieces you say uh people say to live every each day as if it's your last mm -hmm. why not live as if it's your first yeah 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 and i thought about that and i thought mm -hmm. a whole bunch about that yeah um i got up at 5 a.m and i thought about that for like an hour this morning <laughs> and only an hour I'm just I'm just <laughs> i want more <laughs> uh, and I, I thought i started to think about that line and if we did that like literally, if we did that, we would be newborns, and we would need the world to take care of us. And if mm -hmm. the world did not take care of us, we would die in a matter of hours. <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah. And <laughs> because we would be helpless. And yeah. then I thought of the relationship uh, between the artist and the audience, uh -huh. and and how the audience sort of takes care of the artist yeah almost as if the artist were a baby but but not like that at all because a baby is like cute and precious and is this like evidence that god is real and an artist yeah. often is not cute okay yeah. or precious yeah or or enlightening right yeah. so like that <laughs> <laughs> wow <laughs> Um, yeah, I don't know, uh, and I got more on that. But I'm just curious if you ever thought of the metaphor, like, like literally, if we were to treat it like it was our first. I like the idea of like just being curious and wide eyed, yeah, and like yeah, look at this fresh new. Yeah, you know, I have no preconceived stuff I'm coming with to judge this experience with. I'm just brand new. Yeah, but and that's yeah. How do you take the metaphor as a, a literal reality, as like a newborn? Because yeah. a newborn needs... Yeah, needs stuff. Well, yeah, that's a good point, and I like digging deeper into that. Because obviously what I was going for was that sort of, you know, like you have no preconceived no notions. You want, yeah. you know, you are cu you know cu curious in a way that there's no fear, yeah. things like, like that. But I think more, I was focusing more on the live each day, like it's your last part of, of it. Okay. Because for me... If somebody were to tell me tomorrow's gonna be your last day, yeah, I would be pretty damn sad. Like you know, I would be really sad. Well, yeah, yeah. You know? What would you do? Would you like would take a nap? I would. Or? I probably would. Yeah, I would. <laughs> <laughs> a couple of naps. Yeah. Yeah. I would probably uh, really just be fearful and cry a lot and start yeah. worrying about 
you know, my yeah. my wife, the cat, like parents, and yeah. how's this gonna affect? I'd, I'd be, you know, trying to, um, uh, you know, get get financial stuff. I mean, you know, it yeah. it it will be a busy day of doing crap like that instead of it being this sort of Hollywoodized version of like I'm gonna be free and I'm gonna jump out of a plane. And, right. No, like I'm I'm gonna wor- worry about my family. So yeah. that was the thing that I was thinking about with that line. Okay. But definitely being a newborn, that's a really good way to think about it as as well. But I think that, um, yeah, the world, yeah, as a newborn, there's not a lot that you really can do, you know. <laughs> right. <laughs> but and it's but but you're taken care of though, and that's and we would that's hope so. Thing to think right? about. Yeah, yeah, right. Hope, <laughs> we hopefully. would hope so. I mean, like if a newborn was just thrown in the woods, I think oh, there's no way it would live. Oh yeah, no, no. No, it, it wouldn't be a um, Disney film. Like, <laughs> lions no, would come right, and right, wolves right, would raise pick it. it up and yeah. teach it wolf language. Uh, <laughs> Jungle Book, yeah. I don't know. And that, what, okay, so, so still rolling on that dependence mm-hmm. that a baby has. It, I don't know, I've had lots of discussions lately about art and its purpose mm-hmm. and its relationship to its audience. Yeah. Right and on. this notion of like, um, I don't know, approval or uh, connection or validation or, and these words are weighted, you know, like validation kind of has a a stigma. Approval kind of feels like you're in high school and you want to be clapped at. Yeah, well, likes on Instagram, yeah. Yeah, right, right, right. So we live in this sort of like, (laughs) like instant approval place. Mm -hmm. Um, and going with the newborn, I don't know. Have you, do you know Amanda Palmer's work? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So she, yeah, not not super, not not a lot. But yeah. Well, uh, well enough. She's yeah. got this book called The Art of Asking. Yeah. Okay. And in The Art of Asking, she uh, says that crowd funding is very much like crowd surfing. Hmm. <laughs> okay. In the sense of like, if you go to the front of the stage, and there's only three dudes in the audience and a bartender in the back. Yeah, you probably shouldn't swan dive into it. Right, right on. And you and you kind of need to like cultivate an audience before you jump off of the fucking stage and mm-hmm. expect to surf across it on your belly. Yeah, right on. Right. So crowdfunding, then is the same way. Pay me, you know, don't start a Kickstarter with a ten thousand dollar goal. Yeah. If only <laughs> your mom and your cousin and your wife like likes your stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good point. Um was her point but then it brought me back to your line Hmm. about like being the newborn yeah yeah um and i was just like moved by that connection and i'll be honest with you it made me want to get in touch with my inner amanda palmer (laughs) yeah and then my question for you is like how do we do that (laughs) whoa (laughs) how how do we get into not i guess that would be easier than napping Maybe not. I don't know. The point. Yeah. <laughs> I, to follow, I yeah. meant together, uh, but yeah, <laughs> twice. Yeah, twice. Remember not. Yeah. No, no, no. Uh, have you ever thought about that? I guess. Okay. Let me break my question down into something that's intelligible. Um, have you ever crowdfunded or thought about crowdfunding? I have not crowdfunded. Okay. No. Um, but I do see the reasons for it and people do it like Matt Foley you know crowd crowdfunded his books and that's really great okay. and it worked for him and, and it worked yeah okay. yeah yeah and I think that that's really great um I am in a good position with a lot of my work right now with clients and national clients where yeah you know the money part you know it's print, working out yeah yeah okay. yeah man printing a, a book and th- things like that is fine with the digital age yeah you know things things are fine i think okay um luckily i've got good connections with like fest festival i'm, I'm trying to start Dope. with with the city so okay. they they will hand, handle the money part you know okay so i'm glad with things like like that if i didn't yeah. have those resources i probably would yeah but yeah he, he like specifically for the poetry F- festival is something that needs to make some money okay um they will handle that so i'm like cool <laughs> you know cause okay I'll, yeah yeah so like crowdfunding doesn't really well i don't know i'm just now realizing this but yeah. do you see any connection between like the roots you've planted here uh-huh. in charleston and the idea that you you don't 
really sit around dreaming up your next Kickstarter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I... It's got to be connected. Oh, oh, yeah. And I... Yeah, and, that, and specifically, you know, um, yeah, I bought I bought a, a loft, you know, a few years back. Okay. And, you know, it's just an investment, yeah. you know? So yeah. getting that back is really cool. So thankfully my parents pushed me to do that <laughs> because I didn't really... Yeah. And understand it when I did it, but it makes sense now. So, um, but 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 yeah, for my personal projects, I've figured out a way to do it. I mean, self yeah. self publishing. You know, it's like two two dollars per book. Sure, you sell it for ten dollars. Bam. You know? Bam. Yeah. So Bam. That, so that's that makes sense. You know, and sometimes in the academic world, there's a stigma against self publishing. Oh yeah, always. How do you? feel about that or do you feel anything about that do you just say well, fuck it well i'm just uh, it is a little annoying sure. because because that does come up a lot and it's so in interesting i wonder do musicians think about that you know I, like yeah yeah like, yeah, like band mean, camp you put things out on band camp and they're like sound, soundcloud right or, or you know like having a record deal you sure. know as as an artist it's kind of an old school way of thinking you know i mean yeah it's so, a yeah, so is having a, b a book deal an old school way of thinking? To some people, it, it isn't. To me, it kind of is, you know? Yeah. But I think I think that that's great because, you know, the first time I saw something of mine in Barnes & Noble, I'm like, this is cool, you know, like yeah. part of like a compilation thing, and that's great because you can't, you can't replace that, you know, sort of experience. But sure, sure, yeah, the yeah, reach I, is farther. Yeah, um, yeah, the reach is definitely farther. Um, I know, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Well, I feel like it used to be like find a record deal or a publisher and then you'll find an audience. Yeah. yeah. And I feel like that is reversed yeah. now. Yeah. I feel like it's find the audience mm -hmm. and then you might get a record deal. Yeah. Or yeah. or get a published yeah. publishing deal if you get the audience up front and come true. to them with that. Um, but what's fascinating to me about like just going back to your music as well as your book, because you have how many out now? Eight? Yeah, eight books. Yeah. Eight books. Yeah, say seven point five. I did so, like a reprint. Of I don't know. I mean, I let off. I let off with the first question. I know that was silly, but what I was getting at is like yeah. you really give yourself permission mm -hmm. in a way that, in a fearless way that I don't think a lot of artists do. Oh man, thank you. Yeah, and uh, I yeah. think that's hella inspiring. It's super duper dope. Inspired by Prince, man, and <laughs> Ani DeFranco too. Ani DeFranco. Yeah, DeFranco, you... she's she's totally like that. She's what was that Righteous Babe record Righteous she Babe started? Records. Yeah, when she was nineteen, she's never had a record deal, and yeah, people have uh, when at the height of her fame, kind of in the nineties. Yeah record labels were reaching out to her to do stuff and she like did did a big like me a middle finger to all of them and yeah. just continued releasing her stuff and she has a good you know audience and stuff and she makes it work it's really yeah. inspiring and there's no fear there at least from the outside looking in she just lets it out yeah um so yeah, I mean, of course, if I were to get a book deal tomorrow, I'd be like re really excited, you know. Yeah, yeah. But it's not like I feel like that will define the art in any way. Like success for me is just having a book, like being able to print a book. Like we are in a world where we can, I can put out a vinyl tomorrow. You know what I mean? Like, well, maybe not tomorrow. I have to wait for it to ship. Yeah, have but to wait a day or two. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But we are in that world, so um, having the ability to print stuff. Yeah, and have it is that's really cool, man. You know, that's I could, huge. I could die tomorrow, right? Hey yo, so <laughs> so like you never know. So so yeah, yeah, that stuff. So that leads me to one of my last questions. Like, what is? And I promise, there's a follow up. That's. Uh, what is your, like? What is your most tangible fear? Good stuff. Um, specifically or as related to art, because if they're fear, are they different? Well, I mean, fear. Have, <laughs> so what was it? Last month I was sick for a while, mm -hmm. and it was like my throat. Yeah, and then I had a fear like, what if I lose my voice? You know, things yeah. like that. Like, yeah, that that would be a really big fear. So is it like that, or is it you know? Because I could a fear of losing my arm or something or getting hit <laughs> getting hit by a bus or something yeah you know, that's, no, those are scary that's the, but those are like physical 
all those have the the physical pain in common. Or yeah, I'm afraid or of flying. That's another deformed, thing. Yeah. Deformment. You okay? Yeah, I'm afraid of flying. That's not a yeah. Afraid of flying? Like so afraid you won't do it? I've done it, but it's not a a good experience. It's not a pleasure. <laughs> yeah, no. It's not pleasant. Yeah. I'm just sitting here, just you know, okay. clutching onto anything, and yeah, yeah, and my eyes close. And you know, what's it. fascinating about that to me is when you're flying, like as it's taking off, yeah, and it's bumbling or uh, whatever, yeah. or you experience turbulence, yeah, you sort of come to this realization. That you are not in control. No, yeah, yeah, you're, yeah. That's you. That's you're not flying this thing at yeah, all. Yeah, and you can't even if you want to. So you better chill out, mm-hmm. or you can choose to freak out. Yeah, but you're still not in control. You could freak out and you're not in control, yeah. or you could chill out and you're not in control. What's fascinating about that to me, about especially with regards to this conversation, is in your art, through the way that you release music, through yeah. the way you release your books. You're in a hundred percent control. Yeah, yeah, that is true. So, so yeah, there's a, there's something there. Then you know, there's just, something there. No, no, seriously, <laughs> that is a really big uh, deal for me. Um, yeah, yeah, I think I do because obviously being able to design, yeah. you know, design the book cover as well as write the poems and stuff and yeah. and publish it. Yeah, there is a level of sort of control there, but. I do think about, I know I've mentioned Prince like t- 20 times. But, but I keep thinking about Prince. <laughs> but, you know, but but I do because I cause we toured, my wife and I toured his um, his studio, Paisley Park. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a couple months ago. Okay. And we just saw and just how he sort of orchestrated everything, but not yeah. in a like crazy dictatorship way. But okay. he let people sort of be free within that world. Um, but also he really, you know, had, had just a vision, I think from day one had a vision that he knew how in touch with his muse he was. So everything around him was around music. So, I mean, there's a story about people, um, making sure that he had something to record on wherever he was because songs would just come to him and things like that. I don't know. I'm getting off track here, but but I, but like that's a really cool thing. Um, but anyway, going back to fear, let's talk about fear because I could talk about Prince forever. Um, yeah, I think uh, fear for me, in a bigger sense, is if I don't feel like I'm uh, e- e- evolving in any way. Okay. Um, I think it's important for me mm. not to like the poems that I'm writing now, ten years from now. You know, like I want to be able to. Yeah. <laughs> I want to be able to keep on going of course you know you're like, yeah. oh that was a great moment in time but i've learned a lot since then so Dope. yeah yeah so the follow-up to that is what does it look like when you're experiencing the opposite of fear oh wow okay like what does it feel like yeah and i actually mean what does it look like what do you look like when you're experiencing the opposite of fear are you doing a thing yeah are you feeling a certain way? Yeah. Yeah, it's a lightness, I guess. It's um, it's meditation. It's Okay. Yeah, it's sort of a calmness, yeah. I think, um, yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah me- me- meditation is very okay. important for me. Um, okay. Before I do anything or before I meet with somebody or anything like oh, that. Oh, wow. Dope. Yeah, so just taking time. So that is the complete sort of opposite of fear for me is just a sense of peace yeah a sense of peace yeah quietness yeah a sense of peace and quiet yeah wow. yeah quiet yeah that's so fascinating because before we started you were like hold on i gotta turn on some music i can't yeah. do anything without music <laughs> yeah um, yeah but so that's that's interesting um do you have a so a lot of times rituals are important to creativity yeah yeah like you you get on your desk and you clear it off and then you put your favorite thing here and you got your favorite mug here and you got your brand of tea and your ashtray yeah. or whatever you, <laughs> however you kind of organize yourself. Yeah. Can you speak a little to your writing process and yeah. then did those rituals differ in how you make music? Yeah, definitely. I th- with writing, I turn sort of 
I, well, I definitely the phone is off. Sure. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll sort of know uh, things that could really distract me. Okay. Are in my view. So, um, and I'm always, you know, with with writing, super focused. I've got to have some music on though. Um, yeah. and some incense. That's that's my <laughs> Okay, yeah, that's gotta get that thing. incense going. Okay. And and I mean, of course I've written in bars and things like that. Sure. But when I really fo- focus and sharpen what I've started, that's where that's the place that I'm at. Okay. Um with music I've learned with music has it's changed because I used to need to just be alone and you know, be in like a room alone and like be able to scream into a microphone yeah. and do whatever I need to do. But I'm really learning in the space of being, you know, married to make music with with my wife here and that's okay. really awesome. Um, so that's been a really cool thing for me to yeah. be in. Of course I do do a lot of stuff alone because I do work from home and sure. so um, I do have a lot of time alone but it, it's been challenging for me. And a great challenge to be able to sit with the headphones on and do stuff with with her with in the room. Her in the room, and, yeah, yeah, and with with the cat and all that stuff. And it's and it's and that's been awesome to be able to do. Was that change? I mean, I guess in some sense it was mandatory because you were like, oh well, I can either <laughs> stop making music, or I can throw my wife out for a couple hours. Yeah, or yeah, I can... no, yeah. So <clears throat> was that? I don't know. I think a lot of people. I talk to a lot of artists who are like, my art and my home life sometimes conflict. Hmm. Yeah. So, how did? Do you have any advice on marrying those two or making it a peaceful coexistence? Because, well, yeah, I would just say yeah, you've, to see what can ha- happen when you when you try it, you know, and just realize that even that experiment or trying is yeah. something that you are creating. So maybe yeah. it's just. Where, what needs to happen, yeah. you know? I mean, yeah. I mean, I'm all about getting uncomfortable when I need to. So, um, Dope. yeah, with, with you know, music, with poetry as well. But yeah. I think especially with, you know, music, I'm like, okay, this is this is what this is going to be about. Like this album yeah. and or this experience of making the album, you know? So, yeah, yeah I don't know. That's, I, I think it happens, yeah. That's super dope. Yeah. Do you have any advice to your tin year old self <laughs> like if Marcus was 10 years old and he was sitting right here like your cat is yeah and he was <laughs> <laughs> your cat has beautiful eyes yeah she's uh, she's great um what would you tell 10 year old Marcus yeah so that kid who did big butt and those tapes um, yeah yeah just keep on doing it bro like okay. yeah yeah and don't worry so much about your forehead. That would be a thing that I would tell me. <laughs> <laughs> did you have Did you have a big forehead when you were a kid? Kids told me I, I did, and I yeah. would cry about it a lot. Yeah. Um, but but no, yeah, just <laughs> keep doing your thing. Okay. Um, yeah, just keep it up. Like I'm one of my buddies. His daughter yeah. is nine years old, and she's you know m- making music with drum machines. And what? I and actually gave her an old one that I haven't used in a while. And, okay. And she's been doing it, and I'm like, make sure you, yeah, you know, re- record your stuff. It's like, oh, okay, cool. So, I mean, because that stuff, it's almost like I feel like I'm talking to my younger self. Oh, uh, that's I, I so can dope. see a lot of myself in her. Yeah. So that's really cool. So and now it's easier to record, record yourself. I mean, you would, okay. I think so. Um, but, yeah, I just think that that's important, and just archive ev- everything, because that's the stuff that I tre- treasure the most, my old tapes, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah. It's so super dope. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I was, sh- I was not gonna ask this question. I, I, yeah. And then I thought, uh, Kona's judging the question right now. Yeah, the cat is like, I don't know, man. Ask it. <laughs> no, I, I. In researching you, I mean, I've always been a fan of your work, but I was like, if I'm gonna sit down, I really need to research him. So I watched a couple interviews and read some stuff about you and I noticed you said in a couple of them um, with regards to uh, specifically what happened in Charleston mm-hmm. um, with the shooting that the time for a small talk is over mm-hmm. yeah. and yeah. and we need to be okay with being uncomfortable yeah, yeah. with regards to like having discussions mm-hmm. yeah um, and I, w- I 
I actually wanted to ask your advice on this because okay, yeah. um, as a white dude, there's mm-hmm. like this, especially in the South, there's like this thing that happens <laughs> yeah. where you meet other white dudes and they yeah. look at you and they kind of on face value, they go, this is, they look at you and they think like, he is one of my people. Yeah. Therefore, I will share my racist views with him. Oh, jeez. Yeah. yeah. Like, I've, I get the feeling that white, they don't experience it firsthand. They experience it passively mm-hmm. in almost an observer way. Yeah. Where uh, racists will approach other white people and confide in them. Yeah. How much they hate other people. Yeah, yeah. No. And then you're co- sort of confronted with this feeling of like, do I just like, do I punch him in the nose right <laughs> here? Do I, do yeah. I give him a hug and tell him that God is love and that it'll yeah. be okay no matter what? Yeah, right on. Do I, what do I do? Do I ignore him? Yeah. Because I, I feel a responsibility to address mm-hmm. it. Um, and it happens so much. Wow. Uh, yeah. And I I know you experience racism in a very different way. Oh yeah. Um, but to what would you say to that? Like what what should white people say when other white people confide in them? Oh uh, yeah. Because it I swear to God it happens like sometimes I, I ride pedicab in New Orleans so I'll meet a lot of tourists. Yeah yeah. Just yeah. back to back to back to back on busy nights. Mm-hmm. And sometimes it'll happen like four times a night. Jeez man. Wow yeah. And especially when money changes hands, mm-hmm. right? Like like imagine a server and the the table just orders like a thousand dollar bottle of wine and the server thinks, "Uh okay, 20% of that. Oh yeah, I'm going to get tipped on this table." Mm-hmm. And then the table the patriarch of the table like speaks up and says some terribly racist dumb shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> what? Sh- how do we address it? Like, how do we have this uncomfortable dialogue? Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's almost a case by case basis. Like, you have to sort of <laughs> some some people, you know, you might if they say something really bad, you might want to punch punch them in the face. That's what, right. That's what you might need to do. But other folks. Yeah, I think it's important to say, "Hey, I don't, I don't like that." You know, mm-hmm. I mean, it's just seriously like that makes me un, un, un uncomfortable. And sure. then they might be like, "Why?" And then then you really just go from there. I mean, right. but but you have to address it. Yeah, yeah, you have yeah. To, like, yeah, at bring least... it up. I mean, it's it's the same thing with guys when guys talk bad about women or there's some right. misogynist stuff. You know, it yeah. isn't easy, but You've got to say, "Hey, man, that isn't cool." You know, just don't, don't, don't say say that, yeah. or you know, or just th- things like that. I mean, um, yeah, you've got to, and it's not in like a preacher way, but just sure. say, "Hey, that makes me uncomfortable." I mean, if somebody says something, if I say something that makes somebody uncomfortable, I hope that they would say, "Hey, man, that wasn't cool," you know, yeah. or something. But yeah. yeah, you've, yeah, just speak your truth and don't think of it as like, "Oh, I'm changing the world with this conversation." No, just. <laughs> You just yeah. gotta talk to that person just one one on one. I yeah. I love the address it idea and I, normally I do. And the punch in, in the face idea is like <laughs> it's definitely a reaction and then you think as you walk away, like if I punch him in the face, he will only retreat farther into oh yeah. His Word. beliefs. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So like it's almost like a validation. Yeah, that's, They're that's like, true. They're like, I was so right, I got punched in the face. Yeah, yeah. right on. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. Right? Um, and then it's a story to tell. Yeah, and then it's a story to tell. Uh, yeah. Well, I think that if you... The addressing it, though, is, is serious. Yeah, and, and then there's ways to really address things that doesn't seem threatening, because you've got to approach things sort of de- delicately some, sometimes, because people sure. will get super you know offended if you're like, you're, you're a racist. I mean, that's... One thing that I don't like about some of the so, some of the social media stuff is saying white privilege yeah. to people who don't understand it isn't going to help them understand it. Like that term itself is just, has become a loaded term. Yeah, and it's not like pe- you know somebody you know stere- you know stereotypically a rich you know per- person is going to sit there and be like, 
oh, now I realize my white privilege. I'm gonna Thank you so stop. much for telling me about my white privilege. Yeah. I didn't know. Yeah, thank and you. And now that you addressed it upon Facebook. Yeah, now it's really great. Oh, man, that hashtag really, you know. Yeah, your feedback loop somehow... Yeah. <laughs> It somehow encompassed me. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> and then I could, yeah, I people, could feel. Yeah, people, yeah. there's nobody, I don't think anybody's really, who doesn't understand that yeah. is going to change because of that. So sure. so it's just, maybe it's a conversation of like, why do you feel, feel that way? Or, yeah. you know, did your parents, you know, bring bring you up that, that way? Well, my parents sure. brought me up to not think that, you know? Yeah. So not make, make them feel like an alien, but because a lot of this stuff is just learned, you know? Um, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah, so I mean, just approaching it in a way where they don't feel like an alien. I mean, of course, I did say punch somebody if they say something really bad, but... No, but you want to. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes you... Yeah. <laughs> you're like, I've been like 97% sure that's the right move. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And against my better judgment. Yeah. You know, but I'm, I don't think... Uh, Answering with violence. Yeah, no, that's kind not, of the yeah. move. Yeah, but I, I um, do think also beyond race as well, when sure. you start thinking about treating women better, the way we speak about women, even yeah. Um, yeah. even uh, political stuff, like have a conversation with somebody who voted for Trump, like if you didn't didn't vote for Trump. Just, just do it, you know? Just do it. Yeah, yeah. What's the just, worst that could happen? Yeah, it's just there's too many yeah. sort of this and that and me against them sort of mentality yeah. that isn't really um, it's get, positive. Yeah. Yeah. Do you feel like it's getting more polarized? Yeah, I think I do. so. Yeah. I think I, I, I blame social media a lot because I'm an old man, but... These um, kids today. Yeah, these kids <laughs> and their Instagrams, you know, and their yeah. MySpaces and... No, but yeah, I do think that um, because you can create a group of like-minded pe people and you're only going to talk to those like-minded pe people. Yeah. And, and if yeah. anybody, you know, so many pe people on my top timeline was like, if, if you voted for Trump, D, you like, right. friend, friend me now. Defriend like, me now. Like, yeah. what is that going to do, man? Like, you're just creating just a bubble. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. Absolutely. So, and anyway, I think that, you know, we've got to step outside of our comfort zones, man. Yeah. Especially with art. I mean, I feel it's important yeah. to, like, to bring your art to places where they don't experience that. Like, if yeah. you're going to... I don't think you can be... Um, I don't know. Maybe you can be an artist and stay in your own feedback loop, but what's the point? Yeah. Like, if I'm just talking to people who agree with me, I'm not, I'm not even having a conversation. Yeah. There's yeah. not even... There's, that's boring. Yeah, and yeah. there's no sense of like, not that we should all get out and change the world, um, because that's. I'd hate to be the world. <laughs> you know, I'd hate to want to be changed. Yeah, yeah. This sort of like I can fix you with my beliefs. Yeah, stuff. Everybody. I don't want to be on the other end of that. Yeah, um, I mean, it's good. It's good. Good to have an army of people, um, but to push yourself further as an artist, like yeah. It, <clears throat> yeah, start sort of reaching out. I mean, we I had a yeah. conversation with some folks here about our open mics, um, and we're always like, uh, this is like a night to speak up or whatever. And sure. Then, yeah, so the conversation was, well, what if somebody came up and they were speaking up in a way that we don't yet believe in? Sure. Is, is that is that mic, you know, ready for them? And I'm like, yeah. So Vegetarians are welcome. Yeah, right? <laughs> People who don't nap are totally, you know, what welcome, so... So yeah, I'm just like, let's just make sure that if that happens and somebody doesn't like what they said, then yeah. we can talk about it af afterward, but it's not, it's liberals only, you know, like, I mean, that's not, yeah. that's not the way I think. And yeah. yeah I have a lot well, of how could you, I'm, not that I would even do this. Maybe I would. I don't know. I wonder if you could go out and seek voices oh, yeah. that were dissimilar. Yeah. Like, it, it, I don't know where they are right now. I've, yeah. I've, I've been out of touch with Charleston for so long, but... Yeah. But... would be interesting. Inviting other voices to the thing. Yeah, yeah. To even, you know, to challenge your own audience, because if the point is to have a discussion... Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I don't even know if I would find that fun or meaningful, but... Yeah, it it would... But, but it would challenge us to get off of our asses and all this talk about, you know, let's... 
um, you know, uh, I mean, yeah, just let's being, unite, being but only with us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank, yeah, thank you. That was exactly what I was going for. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. We need to all come come together. Well, what does all mean? Does that mean actually that just means us, right yeah, here? Okay, yeah, exactly. Right here, and not that guy. I don't yeah, know who that yeah, guy. That is. guy has a Trump shirt on. Let's, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, let's, I don't want to talk to him. Like, come on. Anyway. Yeah, that's cool. what's up. Yeah. Well, I do. You have anything you want to say before we? Before I click this little button, I've really enjoyed talking to you. Yeah, Thank this, you so is, much. this is really nice. Um, I'm take, looking forward to our show on Friday. Take naps and um, nap it up. Yeah, that's all that I have. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> take naps, everybody. Take, take naps. In case you were Hashtag. resisting the nap. Hashtag Just take, take naps. It. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much. Marcus. Yeah, man. Thank you, brother. That was that was cool. Yay! <laughs> okay. Bye, everybody. Awkward. Silence. Awkward. No, awkward yes. silence while Pesco he messes time. with the iPad. Oh, and this is perfect timing because I need to nap. Get on some stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Bye, y'all. All right. Thanks for listening, y'all. Um, so that's how me and Marcus are doing. Let me know how you're doing in the comments. Uh, and if you liked it, or if you didn't, I was a little nervous. Um, you could probably hear it in my voice. First ever episode. Slightly a little nervous. Um, but it's fun. I really enjoy this process, and I'm going to keep doing it. If you want to know more about me, uh, I just put out a book. It's called Fight Dirty. It is available on Amazon. You can just... Look up Jonathan Brown, Fight Dirty. It's out there. Um, and then my website is jonathanbrownmusic.com. Uh, I'm in Orlando. I played two shows here last night. One at the Copper Rocket, thanks to Mecca. And then I went over and saw Curtis and Joe at Austin's and did a short set there. It was really fun. And tonight I'm doing a workshop and performance at the Milk Bar. And then I'm headed to uh, Charleston and St. Aug, and then Sunday is St. Petersburg. Um, I think that's it. I think that's everything I got for now. And uh, thank you again for listening. Please share it with anybody who you think might like it. And um, thank you. And we're going to close out with some jams from Marcus Amaker. Uh, you can find more about him. I'm MarcusAmaker.com.